Every now and then, some genius or bright spark invents a product that is so revolutionary that humanity as a species leaps forwards into the future because that invention is so fantastic. And I personally am very proud to announce that I have stolen the patent for such a product. Paul, can you hand me the uh, organic lens cloth? Mm, it's got that beautiful sheepy musk, which can only be found here in the Faroe Islands. Now, all you've got to do is take this lens cloth and wipe your lens. And that really has got this shinier than it's ever been. In fact, I believe that if I rub that on there just before taking a shot, it's probably going to make the shot at least 50% more brilliant. And it's also very, very warm. Like, we should just use these as gloves. Like, we should just stuff them in our pockets. That's actually really, really warm. And as I said, it's got that beautiful, oh, there's a piece of shit on that. Mm, so, so nice. Now, this product has to come all the way from the Faroe Islands because it is 100% organic and authentic. Now, I can let you have this lens cloth for one US dollar, but shipping is $1,000. Deal. So if you want to get the most out of these, because you're going to want to use one lens cloth on your front and then another one on the back. So I recommend that you buy two of these. So that's just two US dollars for your 100% organic Faroese lens cloth plus $2,000 shipping. So that is probably the most sound investment you could ever make. And I believe that this completely belongs in your camera bag. The other added bonus of having two of these lens cloths is that when it's really cold, you can stuff one in each pocket and your hands will be nice and toasty. Toasty. For any kids watching, do not try this anywhere on earth ever in your life. Uh, even though Paul was demonstrating the perfect action stance, I was comforted by the fact that he'd signed his liability waiver. I'm not gonna lie, I will be glad to see the back of the Faroe Islands. I've experienced more wind, cold and hail and snow in the last week than I did in years of going to Banff <laughs> Jasper National Park. We got some great shots, but, oh, hang on. Did the wind just stop? The wind just stopped, right, let's get shooting. And by stopped, well, what I meant was died down slightly, only to come back twice as powerful. Jesus, Paul! F***ing hell. Your wife's gonna see this, you know that, don't you? And right there, he realised this was his very last photo trip. So we've each been trying to capture this panorama in this ridiculous wind and it's proving almost impossible because you'll frame up the shot take the shot and as you turn your head the wind is so aggressive that it, it blows tears into your eyes so you can't actually see if you're focused you become temporarily blinded so you blink and just before you take the next shot the wind comes in and gives you another tear streak across your eye again and it's trying to get like a six shot vertical panorama under those conditions is it's ridiculous. So you kind of just take your shot and then you're blinded and then you move a little bit and you can barely see and you just kind of hope and pray that you've, you've got it close to on the marker and then get round to the, the other side of the shot. So with a bit of luck, we all got that, but <laughs> these are challenging conditions to say the least. To achieve this shot, I had to shoot six vertical frames handheld with no tripod. I also had to shoot just one exposure for each frame because I just didn't have the stability or the time to rely on auto exposure bracketing. Those clouds were moving so fast that I knew I'd have problems blending bracketed exposures. Anyway, let me show you the six raw files that made up this panorama. Okay, I'll give you a pro tip right now. Whenever you've got an image that doesn't quite stitch together in Photoshop, and believe me, this one was a mare, it just would not work. When it fails in Photoshop, what I'll do is I'll use a piece of software called Auto Pano Pro by Color. 
and almost every time it does a far better job you have way more control it's a lot more powerful and the end result usually 95% of the time looks really good all right that's your pro tips up back to the vlog so the situation here up at the hanging lake is a little bit different to what it was last year when I came when I came last year, the whole thing was open to the public and you didn't need to pay to get in. Well, now it's been closed off to the general public. And if you want to come in here on an unguided hike, uh, it costs around about 40 Canadian dollars, which when you think about the fact that you're getting access to one of the most spectacular views on planet Earth without having to deal with now hundreds and hundreds of tourists a day, it's worth every penny and even though they've started charging about 40 Canadian dollars uh, per person we've still seen I would say about a hundred hikers uh, since we've been on the trail for about the last two or three hours so it's still very very popular but on the plus side you don't have to clone out 700 tourists from your shots because they're charging a little bit of money for it now if you want to come on a guided tour uh, with a with a, a guide who knows loads about the area and can give you information then that does cost a bit more but i, I think for 40 dollars you can't go wrong really now a popular thing to do if you're a tourist visiting the Faroe Islands is to take as many pictures of yourself as you can standing on a cliff edge, especially if you are young, fit, attractive and own a brightly coloured jacket, which is why none of us did any of that. So when we bought our tickets to get onto the hike today, uh, the guide, and this is one of the, another benefit of having someone around to talk to you about this, the guide told me that way up on that ridge up there you can get an epic view looking this way which I didn't do the last time I was here I didn't know that you could get that view so I'm glad that we got to chat to him so now I think we're gonna go back down into the valley and up the other side and maybe that hike will warm us up a little bit because I am absolutely gibbering right now so we've hiked down 10 minutes ago we were up on that ridge there getting blown to the ground by the wind and now that we're in this valley there's hardly any wind at all it's lovely and warm it's calm oh it's a nice place to have a picnic but i think we'll just head up towards that ridge there though and see what the view is like because i suspect it might be quite tremendous oh look at this patty they look like burgers I hope they don't smell any worse than grumpy's cheese Turns out the guy at the toll booth was right. It really was a great view and a perfect spot for lunch. So we've made it to the other side of the lake where there's this quite fascinating notch here that goes right down to the ocean there. And the, uh, the guide at the office said that there was a, a viewpoint where you can see a couple of really good sea stacks. So we're gonna head to there after. We've just had a nice little picnic. Stop for lunch. Enjoy this calm, calm weather without these gale force winds. And have a sandwich. Another Faroese sandwich. So you know how I've been complaining about being a bit of a chubby chubster on this trip because of all the British and Faroese stodgy food. Well, this is what I'm reduced to. Bloody tomatoes. I'm on a diet already. I can't wait till I get back to Canada to start this diet because I'm expanding on a daily basis. So yeah, tomatoes it is. They're not bad actually. It was only a few years ago I discovered that tomatoes were a fruit. They're not vegetables. Mmm, oh, that's good. Salty. After that much needed lunch break, it was time to go and see what was on the other side of that ridge. Oh, I, th I think I think I feel a photogasm coming on. Well, we made it to the other side of the cliff here and it's afforded as a view of this very, very impressive sea stack. Now, I'm not entirely sure I'm going to be able to get a shot because this is how close I am to the to the cliff edge and that that's it. I don't know, it's about seven feet and that's it. If you fall, you're done and it is windy. So again, once again, I'm not being all that bright right now, but I feel like I'm fairly stable. But I think the shot that I, want, that I would like to get is, is right on the edge and I do not have the balls to do that. But look at that, it's really quite impressive and there's some nice light that kind of, you can see the, the lights creeping up on that cliff behind the stack and then it's rapidly moving towards me and it'll probably 
eventually hit the stack and give it some nice light so it's it's probably worth taking this shot but I don't mind admitting I am twitching like a rabbit's whiskers So when I was just up on that stupid cliff up there, I looked down and I saw Paul Edney here setting up what I believe to be a much safer and probably a nicer shot. So we hiked all the way down to come up and meet Paul and sure enough, he's found a beautiful composition here. And I think all of us are shooting vertical because if I just point that over there, you can see this beautiful section. It's so obvious. And as the light creeps in, you can just see it in the distance there. The light is, you know, the gaps in the clouds are giving us that lovely stripy light that I talked about yesterday. And it's just working its way towards us. And so the plan is to take multiple exposures as it works its way towards us and the camera. And then once you've got enough shots with different light positions, you can then pick and choose when you edit these and blend certain areas of shade and certain areas of light to get a really dynamic and colorful shot which let's be honest it looks better than reality but the chances of getting that formation of light all in one shot are, are not very likely oh nice crashing wave there I think my ideal shot would be to get the perfect type of light that comes and just kisses these cliffs, but also to get some seagulls frozen in motion. So what I'll try and do after I've got a shot with the right kind of light, I'll then take some much faster exposures with wider apertures and a higher ISO and try and capture some of the, the, the motion that's going on in this shot. There's also every now and then some waves that crash on those cliffs there and you get this spray but i'd have to really be perfect with my timing to get that shot if i can get all of those elements that's a killer shot and this is a bonus shot that we didn't actually know existed until we came all the way over to the other side and had a quick look so i don't know if you can see but look at the light moving on the face of the rock there and it's now working its way down and i reckon in about two seconds It'll be all the way down to the bottom, and the bottom will be illuminated. All right, five seconds. Look at that, so fast. And then the cliff starts on the right. Yeah, look, it's spreading out. Hope you can see that in this video. So now all the clouds have pretty much vanished. So now all we have is like a constant blast of sunlight on these pinnacles. And it's nowhere near as dramatic or as interesting as two minutes ago when we had that patchy, stripy light. And I was gonna show, I was gonna film a little clip of uh, how fast that light moves across this pinnacle. It was about four seconds that it, it went from shade to bright and then back again. And you got this stripe of light that worked its way down. I was actually gonna try and film that in real time, but now the clouds seem to have cleared and it's pretty much constant sunlight. But if we get another chance, if it does cloud over a little bit, I'll try and get that for you. Well, as luck would have it, I did get that second chance. So what I'm going to try and do here is demonstrate just how fast this light is moving. So if you look up here in the frame, that's where the light is hitting right now. So there's a gap in the clouds right there and it's making its way towards us. So in a few seconds, you should see it start to appear just on this edge of that pinnacle there. And, and we've seen this happen about 10 or 15 times already. I've been trying to capture it on video and it's eluded me every time. Uh, but just keep your eye on this section here and you should see this light creep up. Oh, there you go, look at that. Look how fast it is. And then it's, it's gonna work its way down. Look how quickly that's moving. It's like, this is real time, it's not a time lapse. Unbelievable. And then as it goes down to the bottom of that pinnacle, it'll work its way into the foreground. And, and this skirt of rock here, absolutely fantastic. And once you've got those frames, you know, if you shoot every two or three seconds, you can blend those perfectly in Photoshop exactly as you would wish. So now you can see that background part is in shade. And if you look way off in the distance, you can see this whole process beginning again as another series of clouds with gaps creeps towards us.
I'm really happy with how this shot turned out. It's actually my favourite shot from that day and in the end I used three exposures for the arrangement of that lovely light on the cliffs. And the two goals that you can see came from another two exposures which I chose because of the pleasing positions of the birds. And finally I love that splash of light in the water that almost mirrors that lovely blue patch of sky. Right guys, I know I got a good shot, what about you? Yeah, I think I got a good shot. Good light, fun times. Fun times, time for a beer, is it beer o'clock? Yeah, it's, it's always beer o'clock well somewhere. It's always beer o'clock. Let's go see what Uncle Grumpenstein's up to. He'd spent all day on the internet trying to find a glory hole. So instead, I thought I'd try and cheer him up by offering him the witch's finger for our very last sunset shoot. So we've moved on from that last location down at the beach and now we are at pretty much the most southern, southernmost point of the island of Vagar. And I doubt that you can see it in the frame, but there's this spectacular spire, this, this finger of rock that juts up into the sky and the light that's, that's hitting the area around it right now is really rather special. And we've been shooting for about 45 minutes and it started off fantastic, then it got hail and snow and rain and then it's got fantastic again so you get these moments where the light just vanishes and if you were to show up at that moment and if you didn't know what the faroe islands was like you'd just give up but we know now that if you just stick around it will change i would say people say oh, it changes in 10 minutes i would say it kind of comes in sort of 30 to 45 minute bursts and you get a complete change and oh man did we get some light so let me just show you this this shot that i got so what I've got going on here, hopefully you can see, um, you have these hills in the background that are catching the light, but here's the spire, and it's just the tip of it is getting a bit of light now. Now, if I scroll forward in time, there you can see it's completely uh, in shade, and there's no light on it. But I've got this shot here with some light on the cliffs, and I'm basically just taking lots and lots of exposures uh, so that you can see this dynamic light quickly changing and moving through the scene. And what I can do when I've got this back in the lab is choose, pick and choose which moments in time I like best and then blend them together. Now it's changed again. The, the last shot I took, let me just scroll. Look at the isolation on that um, spire there. Now it's got this, this rain cloud behind it, which really makes it look um, isolated and clear. But I'm gonna keep shooting and then blend all of these together and who knows you never know we might get rainbows we might get rays of light this is the kind of light that you want when you're shooting scenes like this anything can happen i mean right now i can see some light coming in here so i'm just gonna i'm just gonna keep on shooting so with this shot i'm i'm shooting at an aperture of f8 because as you can see there there's really nothing in my foreground so i don't really need to i don't need to focus stack i don't need to stop down you know it's everything is as far as this lens is concerned at 120 millimeters, everything's pretty much almost on the same focal plane, except for the very distant background, which was which is fading out of the shot anyway because of that mist, which oh, looks just so magical right now. Look at that shot. So I predict that this light here that's coming into the frame from the edge is probably gonna creep down and hit the spire there and give me some really dynamic light, especially now that the back background has completely faded out to nothing and there you can see it, it's on the bottom right if I overexpose it you can just see some light on the bottom of the spire so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna keep shooting because this is just getting better and better by the second tell you what, if I could bottle this kind of light and then sprinkle it out whenever I went shooting, I'd have quite the portfolio. Although on second thoughts that might just take the fun out of landscape photography because I kind of like the uncertainty and the risk and the thrill of the hunt. Even though it often results in failure, that's what makes light like this 
so very, very juicy. So the light just keeps on getting better and better. Um, we've got this, well it's a cloud basically, and it looks like a hail cloud, because that's what we've been having since we arrived, is hail that comes and goes. And now that there's a clearing in the sky, this just opened up right here, and the sun is hitting this cloud with the cliff and the spire. Looks absolutely tremendous, so I am just shooting like an idiot and bracketing and always double checking my focus and I think the only tip I, I'm, I'm capable of giving you right now is the only thing you can mess up really that's never fixable is focus so I'm making sure I get my focus because this is one of those moments if I don't get this oh look at that coming down you see that texture coming down there if I don't get this right right now I'll really be upset with myself later on Right, I'm gonna stop blabbing and keep shooting. Th this just looks like something out of Lord of the Rings. It's so ethereal and mystical looking. Absolutely brilliant. Are you getting some good stuff, Dave? Yes. <laughs> That's so embarrassing. Are you getting some good stuff, Dan? Talk about instant karma for forgetting Dan's name. I try to clean my lens and drop my camera in seawater. Oh. As always, the best light is kicking off right behind where I'm shooting. Hopefully you can see that. Look at that. Got majestic light rays. Oh, it's all kicking off. Whereas I'm shooting in this direction. And the light that we had earlier, which was fantastic, has fizzled out and petered down to nothing. But we are hopeful we're going to stick around. We might get a bit more. Well, we did get a bit more light. In fact, this had turned out to be the most productive day on our entire trip to the Faroe Islands. I think it's safe to say that we all came away with some wonderful images and more than a few hilarious memories, but it was time to move on for the forests of Scotland were calling us back. Well, that finally concludes our brilliant trip to the Faroe Islands. And by the way, uh, the workshop that Adam and I are doing next year, there is only one spot available on that. And we're actually closing registration on September 16th. So if you want to join that workshop, time is running out. Now, you might remember a few months ago, I did a video where I gave away this tripod. Well, at least I, I said I was gonna give it away. And to be quite honest, I've just been too busy to get around to doing this. But now the time has finally come and I have randomly selected one name to pull out of the hat. One very unlucky and desperate individual is gonna be the proud or angry new owner of this piece of shit. So you might be thinking, Gavin, how on earth did you select at random one name from the literally several people that submitted their names to win this? Well, it's not as if I just read the YouTube page where I posted the video and then scrolled through the comments and looked for the most desperate looking individual that really, really needed a crappy tripod. No, seriously, I'd never do that. I totally f would. And the winner is, drum roll please, Jeff Fountain. Congratulations, Jeff. This is all yours. God help you. And as I mentioned in the giveaway video, you're paying for shipping, Jeff. Deal. Now, it's come to my attention that if I want to get Sony to give me free cameras and free lenses, I'm going to need a million subscribers and you can help me with that goal. So just click on that little red subscribe button. Maybe even click on that little bell icon so that you get notifications when my new videos come out. Maybe even hit the old Fumarino, comment on this video and share it with your friends. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.